Hello, and today in this demo we're going to show you how to build an Elkstack lab on your own servers or in the cloud. So we're going to install all the components of Elkstack. We're going to do it by cloning my repo, so that will take all the hard work away running Ansible. We're going to set up Kibana and Grafana to view the metrics, and then we're going to add another couple of VMs in with their metrics and collect those and see those in Grafana too. So I'm using AWS for this, T2 Medium for my Elkmaster, and a couple of T2 Micros for the performance collections. And this is my basic network diagram. Where on the left on the Ansible control node, we're going to build those three servers in the middle and then we're going to collect the stats with beats in Elasticsearch and then we're going to view those in the Grafana dashboard. Okay, so this is my page and this is the code that we're going to use. This will all be available in the comments section. So this just goes through my prereqs and then onto usage. So let's get started. And then, yeah, cd into the Ansible Elk directory, into roles. There we go. So this is all of the code that we're going to use. And then as soon as you have your IP address, you can just run the code. So this is for the Elasticsearch master. So I've got a T2 micro built with Terraform on the left and I'm going to cut and paste the IP address in and run the code and I'm going to do nothing else. Yep, do the host key verification and now this is going to run through. It's going to take a couple of minutes but I'll speed this process up. So this is everything that we need for Elasticsearch. It's in installing all the components. Um, once it's finished we'll be able to access Kibana on the IP address, on the same IP address on port 5601. Okay, so it's on Kibana now. And it's just doing the metric beat. So it will collect its own stats. So it's set up and straight away we'll be able to get some data out. Okay, so that's finished. So we take that IP address and we add in the port and we get to Kibana. So 5601. Okay, so just click through the screens. We want to go to discover and in here we can see our log stash which is great our file names there so we're going to take a copy of that and then update in the index panel and then click on next steps always use timestamp for this and then this will take us to the screen and we should click on discover again and see there's some data points coming in there we go so we can see those so we're going to leave it here I'm not going to use Kibana for the rest I'm going to go to Grafana so it's the same IP address, but this time it's port 3000. And it's hosting our Kibana application. And we're going to set up the index, and I've already got some dashboards that we can use to visualize uh, the stats that we're collecting. So login, admin, admin. So I've never done this before, so I've got to set a new password. It's nice that they've updated it. This is, I think, the currently the latest version we're using, version 754. Okay, so I've just changed my password. First thing we go to do is data sources. So they've got quite a lot in here to configure, but we're going to use Elasticsearch. And it's important you change this name to metric beat because of the dashboards I've got. That's what I'm using. And just localhost port 9200. And then we can scroll to the bottom and now we just do a daily pattern pop in what we did before so it's log slash hyphen daily hyphen and then that should be good so on default okay save and test and now we can go into import dashboard so inside the code I've already downloaded this we can see it is in the code so if you just either cut and paste it and copy it to a file or just clone it locally and pull up pull up this JSON file you'll have access to it too. There, there it is. So just get the Grafani multi-server dashboard.json. Okay. And there we have it. So these are the very first stats from our MetroBeat collection on the master. We're looking at CPU overview. We can also get a breakdown of each service and process that's running, which is really cool. So you can see which services, you know, when you come in late at night, you'll get that view of which services taking up all of your 
CPU processing or even have a look at memory problems, I.O. You know, it's all very obvious. So if we change the timestamp, you can see we're manipulating the data. Now we don't have a lot because we've only got one server. So now we're going to, yeah, so that you can see the setup information. So you can follow it through on the GitHub page as well. We're going to come back to testing the metrics in a second. First, we're going to do is set up another couple of servers. So I've got two other T2 micros ready. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to update the variables, the group vars, and we're going to add in some information. So we, we use this in the template that does the configuration file for MetroBeat and FileBeat. So by adding it in here, it means we don't have to add it individually to files. So we save that. So that should be all they need. So now we run a slightly different playbook. This one is deploy beats.yaml. And what we're going to do is we're going to give it two IP addresses. There it is. And the next one. And this one runs a bit quicker. It doesn't take too long. So just did a host key verification. I could should update in Ansible CFG that we don't need that. Okay, so that's going to run. It's going to download metric beat and download file beat on each server. And the way I've got it set up is it is metric beat sends its output data to file beat and then file beat then forwards it on to Elasticsearch. Just give that a moment. And it's done. Okay. So if we go back to our screen and do a refresh, we should start seeing. Yeah, there they are. So that's the two new servers. And they pop in automatically because everything's been set up to forward the data through. So it's just at the very beginning of the getting the data from those servers. So if we just give it a second, do a few refreshes we'll be able to see the data. And there we go. So we're now collecting data from three servers, two remote and one, one master. So now what I think we can do is we can have a look at using a stress application to force one server to get a bit busier than the others. And then we can see what that looks like. Yes, yeah, so have a look around. It's quite a good little display Grafana. So let's pick this server. And that's it. I just want to show you where it says here for the stress application. So here we go. So I'm on a Ubuntu server, so we're just going to use this to install stress. Oh, the code works on CentOS as well. It works on both. So you can run this, this same code on both Ubuntu or Debian based or RHEL or RHEL and YUM based. So I'm going to start the stress application to do some to do some damage. And let's see what happens. So it'll take it'll take a, a few seconds for the new data to come through. But we should start seeing some spikes and some memory usage going up and some process data going up and see uh, process counts and stuff start to rise. So that's still running. Yeah, so let's just go to that server there. So it's the 1621. Uh, so look, so looking just alone at that server, we can see that every metric is now raised. So we've got IO's gone up. We've got one particular pr process called stress that we can see there running. The CPU overview's gone up. Memory's gone up. So you can see it's quite a good way of seeing what's happening on our servers. There we go. So we've got quite a bit of data there. That's good. So you can see it's, it's sort of fairly obvious that something's happening right now. You know, when you look at the normal behavior of a server and you see these spikes, it sort of tends to make it look a bit obvious that there's a problem somewhere. Let's um, let's stop that. Let's see if I can just change these around. Maybe making it a bit tricky. Okay, yeah, I don't think I've got the resources for some of this stuff. Just 
see if I can make it even worse. So it doesn't like changing much. Okay. It's probably because my, my servers just don't have the resources. Okay, so since I stopped the app running, we can see that the resources have returned or are returning to normal. <coughs> we can compare the two servers. So that's really good. If you if you collect this sort of stats overnight, it can be really, really very handy, you know, to come in at free and see what's going on. Yeah, so just have a look around the display, it's really good. You can change the time scales, you can look at what's happening. So there are a couple of tips. So if you want to use this setup, just be mindful of how much free space you have on the server. So I recommend creating separate logical volumes to store the asset search data on, on and get some bigger disks. So you need to create the size of your environment, you know, work out how much sort of one day one server brings in over 24 hours, and then do the maths and then multiply that by how much data you want to keep. You know, um, you can do archiving as well, which is always good to ship the logs out and use them again later. But yeah, we've had a pretty good time. Try it out yourself. Let me know if it goes well. You know, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe for more videos like this, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Nice one. Have a good day. Bye bye.